Hello, everybody. I'm Klaus Mergener. Very nice for, of, uh, for all of you to join us here. We're at ESGE Days 2022, as you well know, and we are awfully sorry that we're staring at cameras and we don't have you here with us. It's uh, a wonderful day in Prague and hopefully where you're at. Uh, we, we would highly encourage you, if you can, over the next few years, join ESGE Days. It's a fantastic meeting and it will really be fun for you to see it live. But for today, thank you for joining us. We will have a session on procedural innovation and I'm really honored to have with me uh, today, Dr. Mohammed uh, Abdel Rahim, who is the winner of the ESGE Innovation Award this year. Mo, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Magna, and thanks for the ESGE. Thanks for having me. It's it's wonderful to have you. Before we uh, see your video, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from? Where are you currently practicing? And what stage of your career are you in? Sure, I'm, uh, I'm uh, currently working as a, a research fellow in uh, advanced endoscopy uh, based at uh, Portsmouth Hospitals uh, University Trust in the UK. Uh, this is my fourth year in my endoscopy fellowship uh, and I hope that I will finish my training soon, hopefully. Fantastic, so congratulations again for winning a major ESGE award uh, while you're still in training, that's wonderful. Thank you. Why don't we take a look at uh, the video we have pre-recorded and then we'll have a, a little bit of a question and answer session. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Abdurahim uh, and today I'm uh, truly humbled to, to have received the ESGE's Innovation of the Year Award uh, for our invention, uh, WISE Vision Endoscopy. This is an AI system for uh, detection and localization of uh, bias nuclei during endoscopy. Well, we know that early detection of, of bias nuclei is very important because uh, it, it translates into uh, early intervention and, uh, of course, improved clinical outcomes for the patient. The, the problem we have is early nuclei in bias can be uh, really subtle and quite easily missed during endoscopy. Uh, and, and, and the current standard practice uh, is uh, to take quadrantic biopsies, which is uh, not only costly and, uh, um, and time consuming, but also has a certain miss rate. Uh, artificial intelligence or AI is uh, showing a huge uh, potential in, in medicine as a whole, and especially in image based specialties like endoscopy. So we, we wanted to explore how uh, this fascinating uh, technology can uh, help endoscopists to, to fill this gap uh, and improve detection of early bias nucleus. Uh, Wise Vision is a CE marked AI deep learning system based on artificial neural networks. The, the system was trained using uh, thousands of endoscopic images and videos of uh, neoplastic and non neoplastic bias and uh, is designed to detect and localize areas of uh, possible neoplasia within a parish segment in, in real time during endoscopy. Uh, it's a standalone unit that uh, sits next to the main endoscopy screen and can be very easily connected to all major endoscopy platforms. Uh, uh, during endoscopy, Wise Vision works uh, in real time on uh, white light imaging endoscopy uh, to detect and localize areas of possible neoplastic changes. Uh, detection of neoplasia is signaled by a color change in the screen border and that the location of the neoplastic area is shown in a heat map on the side view. Wise vision is designed to uh, draw the endoscopist's attention to a suspicious area so that the endoscopist can um, very closely examine that area using enhanced imaging or acetic acid uh, and, and take targeted biopsies or possibly remove the, the area. So uh, uh, developing AI for, for bias neoplasia wasn't an easy task, I would say. Um, so the, the first challenge we faced as, as clinicians was uh, the, the technical and AI engineering part of all this. So we, we built a, a partnership with uh, NEC Corporation in Japan, uh, which is 
world leading in AI uh, technology and research. Uh, and it's, it's really through this strategic partnership that we were uh, able to achieve all this. Uh, another challenge we, we faced was uh, getting enough data to, to train the AI system. Because uh, unlike uh, uh, colonic polyps, for example, uh, vast data is a much more limited resource. So we, we established a research network with uh, two other large endoscopy units in, in Europe. Uh, so, so you can see there is a huge team, team, team work behind this invention. Uh, from, from the research and endoscopy team in, in Cosmos, led by uh, Professor Pradeep Bandari, uh, to our clinical collaborators in uh, Spain and Italy, uh, to the huge uh, expertise from, from the AI engineering team in uh, NAC Japan. Um, and, and I honestly think it's, it's, it's only because of this fantastic uh, multidisciplinary team um, efforts that we were actually able to do this work. Great. Thanks so much, Mo, for uh, describing that system. We didn't give you much time uh, to talk yeah. a little bit more about the system and specifically the data you've accumulated so far. Sure. We, we all hear more and more about AI in the colon and Barrett's. It's very exciting, of course, for all of us to think that we'll have those systems available to help us. But they're only helpful if they detect what we want them to detect and they don't uh, give us too many false positives. So tell us a little bit about the early pilot data and how good and how accurate is the system. Sure. So we, uh, we, 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 we completed a validation study, a multi-center validation study, to see how our AI system performs. Uh, we did uh, the study on endoscopic video recordings, real-time video recordings of virus assessment, endoscopic virus assessment. And we also wanted to compare how the AI system performs uh, compared to uh, less, uh, less experienced endoscopies. Mm -hmm. And uh, the AI system's accuracy was... Uh, almost 92% uh, compared to only 71% for the uh, endoscopist group. Uh, the sensitivity was also quite good at 93% uh, without compromising on the specificity, which came mm -hmm. around 92, 93%. Um, so it, it all looks very promising from, from this, uh, I would say, preclinical data, but we obviously need to uh, reproduce this high performance in real time uh, endoscopic uh, studies, uh, and this work is currently ongoing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. What do you project for clinical uh, trials? How many patients might you need uh, before you're certain that you can reproduce the data, and how long until we might know whether or not it works in a clinical Yeah, study? it's a very good point because it's, it's quite difficult to do these studies on, on barrets, especially new plastic barrets, because uh, as I said in my recording, it's a very limited resource compared to things like uh, colonic polyps. Uh, the study we are doing now is just uh, assessing how the system works in real time. Uh, and we have started this uh, about six, seven months ago. Uh, the performance we are seeing is not much different from the preclinical data we have. So we are very optimistic that uh, the real time, uh, real world sort of uh, performance will be... Um, not significantly different from, from, from what we saw before. Now, many of us hear about AI studies related to the colon, polyp detection, polyp characterization. There's a bit of a difference, I imagine, when you develop AI systems for the colon versus the esophagus. Is, is Barrett's a more difficult situation for AI to assess, or uh, is, is it very similar to the colon? I would think is uh, a little bit more tricky compared to doing AI in colons. Uh, you can imagine that well, the first thing is barrage new blade is quite subtle. Mm. Uh, so I think it's a much tougher task for AI to detect barrage new blade. The morphology can be very variable as well. Uh, getting the data is, is a real issue uh, in Barrett's. Uh, so there, there are a lot of clinical and technical um, uh, difficulties in doing AI in, in Barrett's. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I would also say is uh, the esophagus, uh, the anatomical difficulty, the esophagus is always relaxing and contracting, uh, and that also causes um, a lot of uh, difficulties in real-time use uh, during video sequences. Right. So I think all in all, I, I see AI in Barrett's as a much more 
um, a demanding and difficult um, mm -hmm. uh, aspect compared to Colon mm -hmm. AI. Now, the system you're working on is, uh, if I understood correctly, focusing on detecting neoplasia yeah. of Barrett's. Do you foresee that systems, AI systems in the future, will provide the whole package? They will tell me that there is Barrett's. They will tell me, since we're sitting in Prague, the Prague classification of Barrett's and will tell me what I need to do therapeutically? Or is that way down the road in the future? What, what will the ideal AI system 10 years from now for the upper GI tract look like, do you think? Uh, I think what, what you describe this holistic sort of AI-assisted uh, endoscopy for bad uh, assessment is certainly what we aspire to. Uh, we are focusing now on AI detection of neoplasia because we, we see that as the most urgent tasks that we need to, to, we need to sort out uh, now. Uh, but I would think in the near future we will be moving to AI-assisted characterization. So AI can tell us it is an early neoplasia or uh, mm -hmm. advanced neoplasia and mm -hmm. that can help endoscopists to also plan uh, therapeutic options as well. Mm -hmm. Early neoplasia will go for endoscopic treatment uh, advance will go for surgery, so that will will be mm -hmm. a huge, uh, a huge help for endoscopic assessment of virus. We have already done some work on AI-assisted staging of uh, mm -hmm. of virus neoplasia into uh, early or deep uh, submucosal invasion in virus, and very early data looks also looks very promising. And I'm aware some other research groups are also doing the same. Mm -hmm. So. I think the short answer is yes. I think in, in the pipeline of AI development, I see all these tasks uh, being worked at and being hopefully uh, accomplished in the, in the near mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a, a couple more in the few minutes we have left, a couple more sort of down-to-earth technical issues as I'm thinking about how we all evaluate Barrett's esophagus with upper endoscopy when we're down there looking at the area of the G-junction and we see fluid and we see inflammatory changes sometimes coexisting with a potential Barrett's esophagus. Are those issues interfering, I assume, with uh, the, the, the accuracy and the performance of the AI system? Or how do you think about those issues? Uh, uh, yes, I mean, these are very important issues, the, the quality of the endoscopic assessment in the first place. And, and I don't think AI... Uh, could help with uh, completely covered mucosa, for example. So uh, the way we designed this AI system is we designed it with all the quality uh, indicators in mind. So we always recommend that uh, before you switch on your AI system to detect neoplasia, you need to clean the, the osophageal mucosa. You need to make sure that you can give patients pre-mucolytic -pre drinks to, to enhance your mucosal visibility. Uh, you need to suck all the fluids and then start to look at uh, neoplasia detection, uh, whether it's endoscopic detection or AI-assisted detection. So I think it, it will come down to the interaction between the endoscopist and the AI system and with the background of all the quality uh, measures in endoscopy being uh, adhered to. And I think this is how we can uh, make real improvement mm. for the patients. Mm. In, in a way, that's reassuring. So what, what we're saying, what you're telling me is that AI will help me, but hopefully will not replace me. There's still a need for, for the physician to input. Of course, and I can't, I can't agree enough with this. Uh, and I, 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 when I discuss with my colleagues and my friends, I, I always sense this anxiety about the machine taking over. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I would say, I don't, I, this, uh, and this is how I used to think as well before I get deeply involved with AI research, uh, medical research. But now uh, I'm, I'm much more reassured. I don't think the machines will take over. I think this will be how we as endoscopists interact with the machine to make a real difference. Very good. And that's, that's a perfect uh, wrap-up final word. And once again, um, I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Mohammed Abdelrahim for spending time with me. And once again, Mo, congratulations for a wonderful award, well-deserved, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you for watching and uh, take care. Please go and see all the other sessions at ESGE Days 2022. 
and we'll see you soon, hopefully in person. Take care.